September 11th, I'm watching, I'm at home getting my whole baggage back from Korea and I watch everything unfold on TV. And I'm like, yeah. this is insane. I was like, I'm sitting there watching it and I'm like, I, this is not just an accident. Right. And so my wife at the time calls me up and she's like, are you watching this? And I said, yeah, this isn't, this is deliberate. And so I'm watching it and I'm like, I'm like, we're, I, I said, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be here. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, something's going on. I don't think I'm going to be here. Yeah. And the next day we tried to get into Bragg, but it, it was so packed the roads because they're checking everybody, you know? So now right. they figure out what's going on. It's, which is usually a 10 minute drive is now like eight hours. Yep. Yeah. So I just turned around and went back home. He couldn't get on. And after a couple of days, we got back on and they briefed us up what happened and what was going on. And then they're like, okay, now we got to go to Afghanistan. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, they go, we're looking for volunteers to go over and support fifth group. Boom. You know, raise our hands, you know, Tomod, me, Brian, Karen, you know, all of us at stay me, yeah. all of us raising our hands, you know, and, uh, so they said, instead of going to Fort Campbell to meet him, we're just going to go straight and meet him. Uh, I can't remember where we met him in Baltimore, I think. And then we okay. jumped on the plane with him in Baltimore to go over there. And so we get all our stuff together and I'm just finishing up my CCF. And I'm like, this is my last class. I just got to, you know, I'm yeah. one week from deploying. And I'm like, I got to, if I got to go to the next class, if I can't make the next class, because the instructor said, if you don't make the next class, you fail. And I'm like, I'm not going to make it, you know? And luckily he said, all right, everybody's done. We don't have to show up for the next class. I was like, nice. cool. Finished my CCAF, got on the plane, flew to Baltimore, flew, loaded up with those guys. And um, we're on our way over. You know, you don't know what to expect. You know, you're sure. like, here we go. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. And we get over there. We land in K2 up in Uzbekistan. And... Um, you know, I get off the plane and you know, I have that hair on the back of your neck stands up. I'm like, we're stepping into, this is Russian territory. Like this is like, I look over, see MIG sitting on the runway, you know? And I'm yeah. like, this is absolutely crazy. You know, right. I, I look over and there's MIG sitting there and I'm like, but they're not running because right. they half of them have flats because they don't have gas. They don't have nothing, but it looks good from the air. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you look from the air, you're like, man, this has got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. But I'm still, I walk up and I'll never forget it. I go I walk up in the line and I learned through the SF that you, that you only have, can have a certain amount of people in a, in a country at one time. And you have to have your name has to be on that list to clear through that country. Oh, okay. So your name's on the list and you show them the list and then the list goes, okay, if your name's on here, you could come in. So I hand him my ID card and it's a Russian guy and he's looking at my, the list and my name's on the list. So he lets me go through. Nice. And, you know, so it's really, it's like, you you know, you're just looking at the guy like, dude, I, this is cold Crazy. war. You know, you're thinking cold yeah. war. You're thinking, dude, you're, yeah. you're, our, you're our bat, you're our enemy, but we're going to go do this. So we go in there and they have, uh, we all make it through. There's, there's uh, eight of us at the time. The 23rd STS is already there. So they're yeah. already set up, got guys on teams. Um, and uh, Captain Bullard is the Stowe that's there. He's the the CCT guy. Yeah. And so Stamey's leading the whole thing. We got Griff, we got me, we got Haytack, we got Beef, we got Tomop, we got Karen. And so we're I'm trying to we're trying to figure out where it's at. And uh, we know now that we have to have somebody into the in the talk, you know, so into the, the op set. And I'm like, well, I, I don't want to go. I want to go on the team, you know? Right, right. But Stamey's like, hey, just go in and sit in there for a little bit. And then, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll. No, that's not what the Stamey did. Stamey <laughs> set me <laughs> in there. Stamey <laughs> set me in there. And then Tim goes on the team. And I'm like, I'm stuck into the opposite. Yeah. I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah. So I'm in there and I meet, um, you know, I, I walk in. There's me, Beave, Griff, and Haytack. And Brian and Tomat and and uh, 
Stamey, and I can't remember who else was there. There's a couple other guys there. Anyway, those guys are all going on teams, and I'm like, I'm. It's like, okay, I'm just going to make the best of it. I just got to do yeah. what I got to do, you know. So, uh, myself and uh, I think Beeve are working the day. Haytack and Griff are working nights. And I mean, it's you know, K two starting to build up a little bit. We're getting guys coming in, you know, and uh, Spans coming in, Zach's coming okay. in. So we got Zachary and those guys coming in and uh, still no officer yet. And uh, so I'm making decisions on guy on things that I, that make me really nervous, you know? So sure. I'm like, I like, I'm like, dude, I'm a, I'm a tech sergeant. I, you know, Colonel Mulholland's sitting with us for the first two, two days of the battle. Cause he wants to make sure we know what they're doing. Yeah. And the only cell in the whole option that was working after the morning brief was the fire cell. And that was us. That was, it was it. Everybody else was leaving, oh, you know? And so Colonel Mulholland's sitting there with us for two days. And then after, after the second day, he looks at me, he goes, rock, you got it. He goes, you need anything? I got to go back and we're going to plan. So Colonel Mulholland gets up, walks away. And I was like, I'm like, all right, this is it. Like, and you know, you don't know the outside world. You just know sure. your little world right here. That's happening. Right. And so I'm, I got, I have a, I have one of, you know, those green books, yep. like the green air force little, uh, notebooks yep, with yep. the hard covers. I got one of those. that has got all the air coming off the, the ships. Like we had two ships, F 14s, F 18s coming off the ships. That's all we had. We had two aircraft carriers out there. They flew like 30 days straight nonstop. And, um, one time this team calls up and they didn't have, um, a JTAC with them. So I'm controlling the air. And I said, the yeah. only thing we got on, on a station right now is a bomber. I said, I need your location. Give me what the target is and I'll build a nine line. So I'm in the ops end building this nine line. He's telling me it's in a village. And so the ROE is very broad, you know, sure. so we, we have very broad ROE. And I hear the guy's, uh, I hear the guy's voice and he's like, he, you could tell panic mode setting in because they're getting yeah. shelled and, and everything. So I'm like, all right, dude, this is, I got a B-52 bringing the bomber in. And I ain't got time to go back and brief Colonel Mulholland because these guys are getting shot at, you know? Right. And so I said, okay, get your heads down. b 52s on its way. I cleared him hot. I said, just call me back when you're, when it's done. And he goes, all right. Mm -hmm. I don't hear nothing for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, cause I can't see anything, you know? Right. And I'm like, I, I don't know if I could, if what happened. And he calls me back. He goes, Hey, we're good. Everything's good. Nice. And I was like, awesome. And <laughs> so now I got to get up because I just bombed a village. So civilians, you know, all this other stuff. So I walk, yeah. knock on Colonel Mahon's little door, makeshift door he had. And I come in and I go, sir, I said, I got, I got, he goes, what's going on, Rock? I said, I got it. I got some stuff. I said, we just had a team that was under fire. I said, I brought a B B fifty two in, dropped down a village, and I said, the Jags are going to come and talk to me. And I said, I, I, I'm in trouble. And he looks at me, he goes, Rock, are the guys okay? And I said, Yeah, they're fine. They're going to get you BDA after they get in there and do the S, S S, you know, the the, the clearing yes. and everything. Yep. And he, yeah, yeah. And he's looking at me and he's like, Guys are okay. And I said, Yeah. He goes, I got the Jag. And I was like, awesome. And I went back and sat down. And um, about two hours later, the JAG comes up by me and he was major and he puts his arm around me. He goes, Sergeant Davis, I heard we bombed a village. And I was like, yes, sir. And he got like, guys are okay. And I was like, yep. He's like, cool, and walks away. And I was yeah. like, Whew. like, you know. <laughs> And then Cubic shows up. Andy shows up. Andy was in yeah. the, was with the twenty third. He went over with CCT guys. So I got Andy squared away. And then, um, you know, Span's cousin was one of the, a CIA guy. Yeah. And those the CIA guys came in and they were asking me. They said, "Hey, you know, we got to go down. How do we do casts?" And I was, I gave him a quick rundown of casts, and that's when all that stuff happened in Mazar Sharif. Yeah. yeah. Uh, up there in Mazar Sharif, and um, after Tomat and Leinhardt's team made it through there, and so, yeah. uh, but they had to make it through that gap to get up there, 
And uh, so I briefed them up on casts and stuff and got them guys in. And then Tomat and those guys are moving. And as they're moving into Mazar, going through the gap there, um, we only had one set of F-18s because all the other, the ships had to, they fly in 30 days straight. So they had to right. lock it. They had to stop, you know? And um, so they stopped and uh, we only had one set that day when they were running split team ops. And I, I was like, like, dude, you got to split the aircraft up. I said, I can't, I don't have any more aircraft for you. I have nothing. Yeah. The bombers coming out of, you know, Diego Garcia weren't going to make it. You know, they weren't going to, we had nothing. Right. And um, so uh, they were using what they could with those guys and they finally met up and got everything together. And then they were going to go through the gap. And then I had some B-52s check on. Nice. Well, Bullard, Bull comes up to me and he's like, Rock, let's drop a Moab in the gap. And I was like, awesome, let's, let's do this. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like game one. So we send the request. Uh, Bull's like, Bull's like, yeah, let's do this. I was like, awesome. And so we send it up, request a Moab to drop into that gap, you know, where all the bad guys are at. Yeah. And he's like, uh, they're like, no, nope, denied, because that's an inhumane weapon you know it's it's inhumane to do that i'm like you know bull and i was like yeah i was like come on but you know what they give us two fully loaded b-52s i mean what's the the difference (laughs) same amount you know the same amount i'm like why can't yeah why isn't this working you know and so anyway we just ended up dropping two b-52s through the gap and those guys pushed all the way up into mazar sharif which is the only place dustin wanted to get to because he didn't really care about anything else that was his yeah it was uh, around Thanksgiving and uh, of November of 2001. And then um, AC-130s finally got in the country. Oh, nice. So it was nice. They flew in that, that night on Thanksgiving. And uh, they flew three. They had three aircraft that landed there. One of them was broke, so we had two available. Mm-hmm. So they were going to send uh, Stamey and them guys and, and uh, Tomat and them were working the Condus area. Mm-hmm. And... Brian and Karen and those guys were up in Mazar Sharif and that was the hot spot at the time. And so they needed LNOs on the, on the birds. So I was like, uh, I volunteered to go, you know, nice. and I was like, I'll go. And <laughs> Bull's like, yep, I'm going. I was like, well, I'm going to Mazar Sharif. And he's like, no. <laughs> and he did the old captain, yeah, um, yeah. you know, officer captain. He flipped so for it. Like, flipped for it. Yeah. So I was like, cool. So I got on the bird to Condus and I'm walking out to the bird and I go to get on the bird and the fires uh, guy that was on the plane on the 130 was a major and it was Sully that was at the Ranger Battalion. He was oh alien. really? Yeah, he gets back on the Nick plane. Sully. I was like Sully. He's like Rock. What are you doing? I was like, he's like Rock. You're sitting next to me. So I sat next to him on the plane. Oh, that's so awesome. I, it was awesome. So I had to explain to him where everybody was at. So I, I gave them the whole battlefield as we took off. They're tweaking the guns uh, in the side of a mountain. You know, it's like 10-minute yeah, yeah. 10 minute combat tweaking of the guns. We fly into Condus, and uh, we, I get an idea of where, the, where our guys are at. I'm talking to Tomat on the ground in Linehart. So they're back here, and, you know, they're, they're away from the bad guys. We see tanks. We see all kinds of you know, uh, Taliban all, and we just start shelling them. Like we're just, you know, I got video of, of, of our mission that night and it is just start showing them and, uh, chase them around. And then we go and we, we hit some, we hit the the main effort and then we go back, start hitting the tanks with one of fives, which isn't going to do anything. You know, it's just going to knock the track off or whatever. And as we're scanning, I look and I see two BM 21s with two ammo trucks next to it. And then the crane to load the missiles into the, you know, into the to BM 21s. Yeah. I tell Sully, I said, Sully, those are BM 21s. And he's like, you sure? And I was like, we need to hit those because that's, those are going to hit our guys before the tanks will. Right. And Sully's like, you sure about that? And I was like, yeah. And the only reason I knew there were BM 21s is because I looked at those, you remember those cards we had? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's the only reason, dude, that I knew that they were. I was like, but I looked smart at the time. I was like, yeah, I'm smart, man. I got I'm smart. Right. And uh, I was like, wow, these things really work. You know, these yeah, right. cards really work. <laughs> and so I start laughing and I was like, 
I laughed to myself. And so we ended up uh, hooked on them and we started hitting them and we blew up one of the ammo trucks, which blew up everything else. And it, oh, they had to pan back and they were like, rock, that's a good, awesome target. Like, cause it, they had to pan back and white it out the screen on the, yeah, on the yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so we started working and um, so we're done, we're done doing that. And we flew back, landed and uh, Bull gets off his plane and I get off my plane. I said, Bull, did you drop anything? He's like, nah. I was like, yeah, dude. See? <laughs> See? I was like, yeah, buddy. I said, we got a bunch of done it. We got a bunch of dunnage. If you want some souvenirs, it's on our plane, you know. <laughs> and so he went over there and we got some stuff. But um, that was the first night that I saw the AC-130 completely blacked out in the back with nothing. And these guys were loading, and it was it was amazing. It was yeah. phenomenal. And yeah. So we debriefed, went to bed, and then I flew a couple more missions. And I was on the mission that night that Price and, and uh, Yoshida and Haytack were on the ground. Oh, yeah. And Yosh was controlling us that night. We had uh, we were in outside uh, Kandahar. Okay. And that's when the, they had the bombing, you know, when the bomb hit the, hit the guys up there. Right. And I, I just got back off the mission. Yoshida was controlling us, the F-18s and a P-3. Landed, debriefed, crashed out for two hours, got up, and then came in, and that's when all hell was breaking loose in the in the ops end. And uh, so we got all that squared away, and and uh, Haytech got Haytech and Yoshida got out because Yoshida had his shoulder blown off and or messed up. Uh, right. I think Haytech had a couple had a broken leg, and so we got those guys out. Yeah. So I get all my stuff together, redeploy back. My son was born uh, that October. I got back okay. in September, so he's born in October. And we're all, you know, now the rumor mill's coming around. Hey, Iraq's going to break out. Iraq's going to break out. You know, so I'm like listening, hearing it all. Griff and I, all, we're all, we're all doing our thing back at the at the groups now. And uh, well, Colonel Mulholland calls up Colonel Longoria at the 18th ASOC, and he's like, "I want, I need Griffin Rock." to come with us you know Jeez. and so he calls up the 22nd he calls up us over there and he says hey uh, the, the do calls us up he goes hey colonel Gory wants to meet with you guys you need all of you, you get everybody up here right now so we get up there and we're all in the in the conference room or in the auditorium and it's just you know it's about 12 of us yeah and colonel Gory looks at me and griff and he's like all right which one of you guys called colonel Mulholland?" <laughs> and we're like, what are, you, what are you talking about? He's like, what you, what you guys call Colonel Mulholland? I was like, we well, didn't. He goes, listen, I run this group. I run where, you know, he's given us the whole, I'm in charge. Sure, sure, sure. And we're like, cool. We're like, we, we understand that. We're like, we, we get it, sir. And he's yeah. like, uh, he's like, well, he called because Iraq's breaking out and they're going to go and they want, you know, Rock, they want you and, you and Griff to go. And he goes, but I decide where we're going, you know, and he's giving us, you know, he's telling right. us, I decide where we're going. I'm like, cool. And so he gets done and we're like, all right, are we going? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, are you heading out or what? Are we going? Yeah, so and so, so he ended up going and we deployed into Ali Asalim. And uh, so Pete Klein's there, Paul Britton, all the guys, Hoffman and all of us are there. And we, but we deployed to Fort Campbell, left with them for Fort Campbell, beat, the 23rd there this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had some SEALs there at Ali Asalim, Colonel Mulholland. I was working uh, 3rd Battalion, and uh, uh, Pete was with 2nd Battalion. Um, Nipe was with the 10th Group guys, and then up north, and then we had a slice of our guys, 1st Battalion, coming out of the out of the west, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're getting ready to invade, and um, that's when the Fort Stewart guys – rolled all the way up into Iraq. Yeah. Defeated our my third battalion, we had no job done. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was done because they 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 messed that one up. Yeah. So so we had no job. So we ended up um, getting ready to to move into Bayat. We got that uh, palace south of Bayat. So we was there till I think October October again. And uh getting ready to redeploy and and you know i ran into a guy there that was on the ac-130 
that was LNO. And I ran into him and he's like, Rock, I knew you'd be here. And I said, I said, yeah, I said, good to see you, sir. He goes, man, you did a lot of good work when we were in Afghanistan in 01. He goes, I got something for you. Dude, he walks over, opens his bag, pulls out an air medal with my name on it. What? And I was like, I look at him. I said, he's like, Rock, he goes, I knew you'd be here. Brought this for you. And I was like, I was like, wow. I was like, what's it for? He goes, that mission that you did in Condus. He goes, everybody on the plane got air medal and the two guys got distinguished flying crosses. The two, the two guys that no were flying way. the plane. Yeah. And I was like, get out of here. <laughs> he's like, he's like, Rock, you want me to take it to Colonel Williams, who was the battalion commander? He goes, he'll hand it to you. I was like, no, no, no. We don't need to, we don't need a big spiel yeah, about it and everything. I said, I don't need it. I said, I don't need the pomp and circumstances for that. I said, I'm good. Yeah. So he gave me my, uh, gave me my medal and, and I was shocked, you know, that, that he, even, he brought it with him. That's there. crazy. That was, that I mean, that's a different, different country, different conflict, everything, you know, whole, all of it. He just, Amazing. I knew you'd be there. And so, uh, wonder how long he's been we, carrying that thing around, you know? I like, know. Right. <laughs> right. I was like, like, sir, how you like, and it's not like, like I could see if he just typed it up, you know what I'm sure. saying? Like if he just typed it up right there. It already had my name, had the date, and everything already signed on it. 